In this lesson, we'll introduce the particle view interface by creating smoke using particle flow. So if you want to follow along, just go ahead and open up the Lesson2Start.max in your Project Files folder. And let's go ahead and get started by creating some smoke using our particle flow. So to get to particle flow, we need to go to our Create panel. We need to make sure that we're under Geometry. And then we're going to hit our drop-down box, and we're going to go to Particle Systems. Now we have several different particle systems that we could choose from, but what we're going to use right now is called Particle Flow Source. Okay, so let's go ahead and create a particle flow source in our scene here. And what I want to do is actually switch to my front view, so I'm going to hit F on my keyboard to do that. And you'll notice that I have this viewport background here, and this can be a little bit distracting, so let's go ahead and get rid of that just for right now. So let's go to Views, Viewport Background, and uncheck this Show Background. Okay. Now let's go ahead and create this particle flow source on top of our window, and I want to make sure that this auto grid is checked here. Okay. So let's go ahead and create this particle flow source right on this window geometry. So we're going to click and drag just about the size of our window here. And we'll go ahead and we'll right click one time just to end this particle flow source creation. Now I'm going to go to my perspective view, just hit P on the keyboard. I'm just going to orbit around this. And whenever we create a particle flow source inside of our scene, we have this icon, and this is actually called the emitter, where the particles are actually going to emit from this icon here. Now you'll notice that we can't really see any particles, and what we need to do is actually scrub our time slider to the right. Now you'll notice that we get a little bit of action going on in here, and we're not really sure what that is. Okay, and those are actually particles being emitted, but we can't really see them emitting outward, and that's because our particle flow source is actually pointed inside of our building. So what we want to do is go ahead and rotate that 180 degrees to face outward. Now I'm just going to make sure that my angle snap is turned on, and rotate this 180 degrees. Okay, once we do that, you'll see that the particles, let me go back five degrees there, make sure that that's flush with my window. And you can see that these particles are emitting outward here. All right, so as we move our time slider, we can see these particles emitting outward, but it's not really giving us the reaction of smoke. Okay, so we need to actually modify this particle system. So let's go ahead and go over to our modify panel. And you'll notice that we get a couple of different parameters that we can adjust in here, but nothing that really modifies the particle system itself or the behavior of these particles. Now what we do have with particle flow source is the particle view. Now the particle view can only be used with particle flow source. So if you begin using some of those non-event driven particle systems like that snow or that blizzard or spray or super spray, you cannot actually adjust or modify those using the particle view. Okay, so I just want you to, to know that. So let's go ahead and just kind of discuss the interface of the particle view just to kind of get you acquainted with it. The first area that we have is called the event display. And inside of here you'll see that we have what's called events. And inside of these events are operators. Okay? And this is how the particle system actually knows how to behave. It goes down the list here and follows the different parameters of these different operators. Okay? So that's how this particle system is actually emitting particles uh, by default. Now you'll notice that we have these operators down in this area, and this is called the depot. And this is where all of our operators are actually held. Okay, so we can actually drag in new operators. We can replace existing operators by dragging one on top of it. So let's say just just for all intensive purposes, just to give an example, let's take our position icon that we have in here, and let's actually drag in a position object. And what we're going to do is actually replace this one. Now you'll notice that I get this red line, and what this is going to do is take out the position icon 001 and replace it with position object 001. Okay? 
Now, if we go ahead and we drag in something new, let's say we want to drag in this scale operator, and we don't necessarily want to replace anything, we just want to drag it into this event. You'll notice that we have this blue line here, and this is basically just adding an operator to an event. Okay, so just click and drag that in there, and you'll see that scale drops in there with no problems. Now we can select these different operators in this event. Okay, just by clicking on them, and it'll highlight them in yellow, or I'm sorry, in white. And what we can do is actually we can move these around, we can reorder them if we need to, or we can actually just delete them out of our event. So in this case, I want scale 001 out of this event, so I'm just going to hit delete. We, there we go. And I want to actually go ahead and take my position object and I want to delete it as well. But I'm just going to go ahead and replace it with my position icon just to get back to my normal uh, view here. So now you'll see that our particles are emitting just as they were before. Okay. Now, once we select an operator inside of our event, you'll see that we have our parameters rollout section here, our parameters panel and you'll see that we have birth 001 selected in our parameters okay and here we can actually modify the behaviors of this specific operator using our parameters panel here now finally what we have is the description panel and whenever we select an operator in here we get a little bit of a description about that specific operator so if you're experimenting with some of these different operators and you're trying to get an idea of what this is going to do for your project, you can kind of get a description right in here and give you an idea of how you can experiment with that. Okay, so now that we've been introduced to our particle view interface, let's go ahead and start getting the behavior of our smoke here. So you'll notice that our particles start emitting at zero and they come out and then after 30 you'll notice that those particles no longer emit so what we're actually looking for in our smoke behavior is we want our smoke to actually be going and billowing out of our building before our animation actually starts we don't want to watch that smoke growing or billowing out of the window uh, at this moment so what I want to do is actually adjust my parameters of my birth operator now the first thing that we see with our birth operator selected is we have emit start and obviously this is going to control when our particles begin emitting so let's say I wanted this to emit before frame zero I can actually type in a negative number and have my smoke billowing out of my building whenever this animation starts so I'm going to type in negative 30 and I'll hit enter one time and let's go back to zero and you'll see that these particles are already emitting now we need to deal with the particles stop or with their you know they're emitting uh, stopping we need to adjust that so let's go to emit stop and let's take this all the way up to 100 seeing how we have 100 frames on our timeline so let's go to 100 and now you'll notice these particles emit all the way to the end of this segment okay now the next thing that we have is our amount and we can actually type in an absolute amount of particles that are going to emit so if we want some big thick smoke we could type in let's say 600 and we'll see that we get some particles emitting now we're gonna have 600 particles that emit from negative 30 to 100 so you want to keep that in mind. It's not from 0 to 100, it's from negative 30 to 100. So let's say we want it to really get really thick, so let's go to 1200 and double that. And we get a lot of particles here. Okay, now that's going to be some really big thick smoke there. Now we could also use rate, and this is actually how many particles are emitted per second. So let's say I want to go ahead and do, let's say, let's say 500 particles per second you'll see now the total of particles that we get when using rate okay so if we hit play on this get our particles emitting and that's pretty thick there now on this smoke you'll notice that it's emitting out pretty fast so we're just gonna hit this play in anim animation and it's coming out pretty quickly and it's still coming straight out 
So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and go to the next lesson where we're going to finish up the behaviors of this smoke particle system.